All right, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of the Risen Fallen Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Hendrickson, and what you can expect from this podcast is open and authentic conversations about things like mental health, self-development, and how we can get our lives into a better place where sometimes that's just you know, feeling like we have hope, feeling like we can survive in this world. Sometimes that's getting to a place where you're actually happy and you're feeling like you're living your life's purpose and feeling like, you know, you're in a spot where you're happy and, and you're feeling proud of yourself and uh, feeling like you got some some meaning in your life. And, and uh, that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, I'm actually slightly confused and I am going to talk about you know, some news that just came out this week. It's kind of something that's been in discussion for a while now in Canada here. And it's something that, uh, like I said, it's uh, kind of confusing for me. I I really, uh, I don't know what to make of this. I kind of have my own view on this, but I'm looking to see what you guys think of this as well. Um, So I'm usually pretty pro fucking freedom. I'm pretty pro choice. I'm pretty, uh, I, I like to live in a way and think in a way that is basically like the live and let live. I, I don't really care what other people do so long as it's not harming other people. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, this life is very precious. We should all be grateful for it. We should all be grateful every single day when we wake up and we get to have a new opportunity to make our lives better and make someone else's life uh, like better as well. And that's something that I do hold deeply and valuably uh, in my heart, um, obviously mental illness is, uh, a topic that is pretty close to home for me. I've suffered with mental illness. A lot of my, uh, a couple of my family members do as well. Um, and obviously my friends and the community around me, they, uh, obviously I wouldn't be talking about these topics if it didn't mean something to me. So I, uh, I am very, uh, pro freedom and very pro, um, mental health and self-development in terms of trying to aid in making people feel better and trying to help them see the light that they have inside them and see how that uh, the, the fact that we're all connected and that we, uh, you know, can all help each other out. So our government, our current government does a lot of things that confuse me. They do a lot of things that make me angry. They do a lot of things that really upset me or make me sad. Um, at the end of the day, I try and basically live my life in a way that it doesn't really matter what happens in the outside world. Uh, I'm going to do my very best every single day to make myself better so that I can try and help other people to make themselves better so that they, whether that's, uh, you know, making more money, making, uh, better connections in life, uh, improving their health and wellness, or just kind of feeling better, being able to put a smile on someone's face. That's the way I look at my life is no matter what goes on around me, I'm going to make myself better, happier, healthier, um, so that I can try and inspire other people to do the exact same. Uh, I think that that's kind of a a good way to go about life, and that's the way I'm going to continue going about life no matter what happens. Uh, Like I said, this government does a lot of things that confuse me uh, here in Canada, and uh, I'm going to talk about one of those things today. It's kind of a touchy subject probably for some people, but I think this is something that definitely needs to be discussed. And uh, I think that a lot of people are kind of nervous to talk about this, but um, something that I thought I'd talk about. So Canada has a program called MAID, which is Medical Assistance in Dying. And that um, is basically euthanasia, assisted suicide. And so regardless of how you feel about suicide, that's part of our laws. And there are some requirements that you have to meet. And so I'll go over the current requirements that we have going on right now. And then I'm going to talk about some of the changes they're planning on making here. And uh, I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm open to hear your opinion. Um, I'll just kind of go from there. So the current requirements for medical assistance in dying or euthanasia in Canada, basically, you have to meet all of the following criteria. I'm going to read it out off of the, uh, literally our government's website, canada.ca. It says, to be considered as having a grievous and 
irremediable medical condition, you must meet all of the following criteria. You must have a serious illness, a disease, or a disability, and then it says in parentheses here, excluding a mental illness until March 17th, 2023. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But I'm going to keep going on with the requirements first. The second requirement is you have to be in an advanced state of decline that cannot be reversed. This is going to be critical in when I give my opinion on what's going on right now. And then the third one is experience unbearable physical or mental suffering because of your illness, disease, disability, or state of decline that cannot be relieved under conditions that you consider acceptable. It says underneath, you do not need to have a fatal or terminal condition to be eligible for medical assistance in dying. Uh, the other criteria you must fall under is be eligible for health services um, under the federal government or provincial or territorial government. Um, it says uh, you must be 18 years old and mentally competent, which again, that might come into play when we're talking about the things that we might talk about today. This means you are being capable. This means being capable of making care, health care decisions for yourself. Uh, and then it says you have to have a grievous, irremediable, irre irredeemable medical condition. You must make a voluntary request for this and not under the result of outside pressure or influence. And you have to give your informed consent for this. Now, it also says here, if a mental illness is the only medical condition leading you towards considering MAID, you are not eligible to seek MAID at this time. Under the new changes made to the law, the exclusion will remain in effect until March 17th, 2023. This temporary exclusion provides the Government of Canada and health professional bodies more time to consider how MAID can be provided safely to those who, whose only medical condition is mental illness. To support this work, the government initiated an expert review to provide recommendations on protocols, guidance, safeguards for those with mental illness seeking MAID. After March 17, 2023, People with a mental illness as their sole underlying medical condition will have access to MAID if they meet all the eligibility. And so, what does this all mean? Basically, right now, um, if you have a mental illness and that's the only reason you're seeking medical assistance in dying, that uh, doesn't really qualify you yet. But they're saying that they're going to be making these changes to get rid of this exclusion and start to provide this uh, medical treatment, quote unquote, medical treatment for people that are suffering from mental illness. Now, got a lot of questions about this, obviously. Uh, like, what does this fucking entail? What kind of mental illnesses are we talking about here? Like, am I, what if I'm prescribed, obviously, with ADHD? That's probably not going to be one of the cases. But when we start to talk about things like, what about schizophrenia? What about depression? What about, uh, you know, when we talk about chronic depression, depression that doesn't go away, is that considered irreversible? Is that considered kind of a, a consistent decline or, or something that cannot be reversed? Um, you know, this, what, when I think about this and when I read this, I literally just think to myself, what the fuck are we talking about here? The government is going to start assisting people in suicide because they're depressed? I think that this is the most backwards way to lead a country and to lead anybody, whether you're a fucking uh, a leader of a country or you're a leader of a family or you're, you know, just a friend of somebody. Like, I, I don't think that this is fucking making any sense whatsoever. It fucking disheartens me to hear about this. And like I said, I'm pretty pro-freedom. I, I, I think people are free to make their own decisions and they're free to make their own judgments. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now, making a little judgment here. But I think... Shouldn't the underlying message that we give to people that are suffering from mental illnesses be like something along the lines of 
you know, you're not fucking alone and life can and will get better for you. I feel like that's kind of a value or a message that we should be sending people. Not, hey, if things get too hard, you can just fucking quit and give up. And I'm not talking about this out of context. This is literally the the law that they're basically saying is like they're going to be making changes. And again, I don't know the specific changes they're going to be making. Maybe maybe this will all blow over and I'm completely taking this out of context. But I'm, I'm speaking about this because, you know, I've been impacted by suicide. I, I've had people in my family commit suicide. I've had friends commit suicide. I've had people that I didn't know that well commit suicide, people that I just went to school with. And every single time it leaves the people around those people, you know, and myself included wondering what the fuck could I have done differently? Like, why did this person think that life would be better without them? Even though that is the constant thought that we have when we are depressed all the time. And when we do have suicidal thoughts is like, maybe the world would be a better place without me. And I feel like it's our duty as people, especially anyone that suffered from depression or, or thoughts of these things as well in the past, I feel like it's our duty to, to tell people, you know, you're not alone and life can and will get better for you. And you're not the only one that feels like this. You're not a freak or you're not fucked up for feeling like this. But just understand that you shouldn't make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings or emotions. Like I was talking to somebody yesterday about this, about depression and, and these types of thoughts in that it's, it's part of the human experience. And I think that most human beings feel this way at some point in their life. And there is probably the raw exception or the, the odd exception, I mean, that doesn't ever get these thoughts, that doesn't ever feel that way. But I think that humans are so, you know, weird and kind of fucked up. And, and I think that we're all like that and that doesn't kind of make us different like i think that this is literally part of the human experience and i think that you know we all have our different coping mechanisms we all have different lenses that we view this world it's just something that just fucking boggles my mind that that this would be something that they start to implement here and um you know kind of give this you know idea even a a serious thought that they that they would just couldn't you know basically provide this service yeah i don't know how i fucking feel about this i uh i know that it's definitely a touchy subject it's but it is something that i feel like it's like man this is the most backwards fucking thinking i could seriously think of you know It doesn't make any sense to me. I I don't understand how this could fucking happen um, or why this would happen. I don't think that, uh, you know, I don't think that this is the, the, the solution. I don't think that this is the right thing because especially when you look at the, the sense that, you know, when you see generation Z, like the youngest generation that we have right now, like over fucking half the people are on fucking antidepressant medications or or some sort of like uh you know mental illness that like quote unquote diagnosis with uh with some sort of mental illness and it's like we're at risk of losing a fucking huge portion of our population that can definitely make this world a fucking better place and we're going to be hurting without them what does that world look like when we start to just say uh You know, you can just fucking leave it if it's getting too hard. I just, it doesn't, I can't wrap my head around it because I always come from the idea or the notion that we need to fucking lift each other up. It's, uh, again, something that's just boggling my mind right now. I might have to retake this fucking episode, but I might just fucking post this as is just because, uh, I don't even really know what to think right now. I'm fucking baffled. So, yeah, that's that's the way I feel about it. I think this is fucking disgusting. I think it's egregious. I think that this is fucking, I, again, another thing that this government has done that just fucking blows my mind, confuses me, and pisses me off. And... 
yeah, I just don't like the way that they fucking speak about it. Like, uh, one of the qualifications, like the criteria is the state, the, 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 they say you have to be in an advanced state of decline that cannot be reversed and talking about it. Like it's like a permanent thing. Like, dude, if it's, if they start allowing, you know, medical assistance and dying for something like depression, it's like, you're basically saying that no matter what, that that can't be reversed. And what kind of message does that send to other people? When it obviously can. Now, I wanted to add this in as well. Uh, I got an article sent to me today uh, from City News in Ottawa. And this is an article about a, a man in Ontario applying for medically assisted death as an alternative to being homeless. Now, there's this 54-year-old man in St. Catharines, Ontario, He is applying for medical assistance and dying, not because he wants to die, but because social supports are failing him and he fears he may have no other choice. He lives in, it says, Amir Farsud lives with never-ending agony from a back injury years ago and tells the news that it's at its worst and uh, he's in a lot of pain. He's also taking medication for depression and anxiety. And he describes his quality of life as awful, non-existent, and terrible. He does nothing but manage pain. He says, however, that the quality of his life is not the reason he's applying for MAID. He said that he is applying because he's currently in danger of losing his housing and fears being homeless over dying. And then there's a quote saying, it's not my first choice. I don't want to die, but I don't want to be homeless more than I don't want to die, he says. And then uh, the article kind of keeps keeps talking about this. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire article. I'm actually just going to share it in the show notes for the podcast version of this episode. And it'll be in the description below for the YouTube version of this episode. But uh, later on in the article, it says that Farsud is not the first person with disabilities to continue made, uh, consider made due to the lack of resources available to them. City News previously spoke to Richard Ewald, who has chronic obstruction pulmonary, pulmonary disease, uh, COPD, stage four liver disease, and suffers from chronic pain and depression. So again... Um, it talks more and more about uh, kind of the benefits that they have through the government uh, just uh, in aid to help them pay their bills and basically pay their, their rent and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but there's another quote here from Ewald saying, I'm not suicidal. Sometimes it's a choice between burning to death and jumping out of a high rise building. I'd like to have that choice. I've suffered. I really don't want to suffer past a certain point. I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't so stuck in this situation with ODSP. Um, ODSP is the Ontario Disability Support Program. So um, he's explaining that basically this, this article explains that ODSP is often a life below the poverty line. And... Then it talks about how much money they receive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you guys can go and read this article if you like. I'm not going to go about uh, reading the entire article right now, but this just kind of it's it's troubling to me that there's literally people applying for this already. When it's like, man, I I just feel like we're jumping to the last resort, and instead of trying to aid the situation, we're just trying to get rid of the situation. You know, with all the ways, and I'm sure you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you see all the time, and I'm not trying to make this political, but it's like in all the ways that our government wastes money and fucking sends money overseas and and pays and funds wars on both sides of the war, you know, um, all the money that it wastes giving money out randomly to fucking every fucking citizen for no reason, printing money for two years, it's like... Look, I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not a huge proponent for giving money all the time, but like these are fucking people that need help, whether they need help medically, whether they need help financially. 
And it's like, man, this is, to me, it's it's displaying a total failure of society for these people. Like, these people are being failed by society. And it just seems like, for me, we're, we're not trying to, this is like an example of not trying to solve the problem, but to sweep it under the rug. And to hide the inadequacies of the system that we all fucking brag about. Like, one of the biggest things that uh, us Canadians, we brag about is the social safety nets and the free medical system and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we brag about how much better our medical system is and our social safety net system is, you know, it's better than the Americans in this way or that way, et cetera. But it's like, man, these are people that are slipping through the cracks. These are people that were failing. And if we want to be able to brag about these fucking things, we have to be able to speak up and, and stand up to things like this fucking what's going on right now. You know, I think that this is um, one of the quotes in here. It says we were unbelievably naive as a nation to think that vulnerability, disability, poverty, that we could parcel that off and it wasn't going to be a problem. It's a huge problem, you know, and I completely agree with that notion. It's like I, on a government level, we're fucking failing because it's like, man, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars billions probably i'd say with with like it's just being siphoned off to these fucking people's pockets and there's people like this that are like literally faced with the fucking option they think that their only option is like maybe i'll just fucking die you know and where are the people in their fucking lives i don't know about and again this is why i always say you know, no two lives are the same. I can't speak to the problems that other people live. I can only speak to my own problems. I can only speak to my own trauma. I can only speak to my own struggles in life. But this fucking embodies more and more the the vision that I have and the the, you know, purpose that I see in life where we need to fucking empower ourselves and then empower everybody around us. You know, and lift each other up. This is, it's, it's fucking insane to me that these people slip through the cracks. And uh, I just wanted to talk about that as well. No matter what your circumstances are, like we've seen people that, you know, go into addiction, fall into addiction, lose everything in their lives, lose their family, lose their kids, lose their spouses, lose their homes, lose their jobs, lose fucking everything. They burn their lives to the ground. And then they slowly fucking rebuild. They go to treatment. They go to rehab. They get a fucking part-time job or they start volunteering. They get into a shelter. They get a fucking roof over their head. You know, and inch by inch by inch by inch by inch, they make their lives fucking better. And then these people, these underdog stories that we all fucking know and love so well, you know, those are the people that inspire us to make changes in our own lives and to think, man, if that person can do it, so can I. You know, to, to fucking think or set a precedent that these things can't be reversed is the, the most demoralizing message you can send to a population. And I get the, uh, the, third, the third criteria, the third piece of criteria. They say experience unbearable physical or mental suffering from your illness, disease, disability, whatever. You know, that's such a... Um, it's such a... What's the word I'm looking for? It's such a subjective thing when it comes to mental illness. Like what qualifies as unbearable? When someone just says, hey, this is unbearable... Like, if you were to ask me, like, probably a hundred times in my life, I would have woken up and said, like, fuck, this is unbearable. But I bared it. And I'm sure that you've probably felt the exact same way. I'm sure that you've probably felt so many times in your life, like, I can't handle this. I can't take this. I can't do another day of this. This is fucking unbearable. Yeah, here you are. You're listening to this podcast right now. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Um, like I said, as someone that's very passionate about this topic, that's somebody that's uh, as somebody that you know has their DMs filled in Instagram of people fucking reaching out, telling them about how fucking you know 
terrible they feel and then months and months later they're like fuck i'm i'm making progress i'm feeling better or you know i just think that this is such a backwards message to send to send out to people and so um i don't know maybe someone can fucking clarify this maybe i'm taking this all wrong and all out of context um but I just want you to know that even if your government doesn't have your back, I fucking do. And if you are fucking hurting right now, please reach out to me and like we'll fucking chat. I'll try and connect you with services or people that I know of that might be able to help you out better than I can. Um, no matter what, you're not alone and life can and will get better. I know I've said that a couple times today and I'll fucking say it till I'm blue in the face. And uh, maybe you don't relate to me. Maybe maybe you listen to this podcast a couple times and you think like, man, why does this guy swear so much? Or why does he speak the way that he does? You know, I can be a bit intense sometimes. Maybe you don't relate to the way I think and speak. But uh, there's someone out there that will. That There's somewhere out there, not even that will relate to me, but I'm saying that somebody out there will relate to you, will be able to connect with you. And I'm just trying to start that conversation. So... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone can, uh, if, you, if you guys maybe know about this and you have a different point of view, a different perspective, and you want to maybe talk about this and we can kind of, you can clarify it for me. Maybe I'm completely getting this all wrong. I'm not the fucking smartest person in the world. You know, I work in construction and I just run this little podcast on the side. So maybe I'm getting this all wrong. Maybe I, I don't have a good grasp or understanding of what they're talking about here, but uh, I think I've got it pretty good. And uh, if maybe I'm wrong, maybe you can explain this to me a little bit better and then I can make some corrections in the future. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm really, uh, I'm really uh, upset about this, man. It's something that I'm really outraged by. But uh, the nice thing is, and this is, this is going to be maybe the most uplifting part of this episode. I know this episode has been a little bit of a downer, or maybe it's been boring to listen to or confusing to listen to, but I'm going to say that this this right now is probably going to be the most uplifting part of this podcast is this. This move from the government to allow euthanasia for people that are suffering solely from mental illness is motivating me so much more to make myself better so that I can help more people, so that it doesn't have to fucking come to this. Because I think that so many times in our medical system, we're looking to fucking cure the symptoms without looking at the cause of the symptoms. And so we're so quick to provide fucking medical assistance in dying for someone that's suffering mentally, or even things like fucking antidepressants or anything like that, when we don't look at the fucking cause of why someone's suffering in the first place. And this whole fucking fiasco is just motivating me so much more to try and reach out to people that are suffering and try and help them with the cause of their suffering and alleviate that suffering and get someone a little bit closer to fucking happiness and just the ability to even feel joy. And so if you're feeling like I do right now and you're feeling a little bit upset, confused, outraged, angry, sad, um, or disheartened from this news, this message right now, take it as a fucking motivator to make yourself better and lift others up. You know, you could be the person that saves someone else's life just by fucking putting a smile on their face or reminding them like, hey, I love you. I need you around. And that's how I'm going to end it today. So I hope you're doing well. If you're not, fucking reach out, please. I'm begging you, reach out. But that's all I got for today. Um, I usually don't try. I try not to cover like fucking current events and news. But when I heard about this, I just had to fucking talk about it because it was on my mind. So that's all I got for today. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'll fucking post a link to the uh, government of Canada website so you guys can read this shit for yourself. Maybe, like I said, maybe I'm getting this all wrong, but I don't think I am. Um, that's pretty much it. Hope you're doing well. If you're not, reach out. If you're fucking doing well, then reach out to someone that you think might not be and fucking put a smile on their face. 
And uh, like I said in the very beginning, or like I said near the end here, I'm going to try and end this on a little bit of a, a positive note. You're, you're not alone. And life can and will get better for you. And regardless of what happens in Canadian politics or whatever happens in your fucking, you know, in, in this world in general, you know, um, I think it, I think it's our duty to help lift other people up. And I think that the more we even do that, the better we feel, the better they're, they're going to feel. And we all have the capacity to do that. We all have the, the ability to make someone else smile. So go out and do that today. Make yourself proud and make me proud. So uh, that's all I got. I love you all. Thank you for the constant support that you guys give me um, and the support that you give each other. I love you all. Much love. Peace out.